Commission's uh, informational meeting. You might want to be there. At, at the last meeting of our Bush Patrol, I was shocked at the, the response from uh, Mary Jane Angle and, and Chrissy from CDM on their visit to the DEP. It seems like you know, we're in the court order to correct our wastewater problem. And the basis for that is that uh, uh, pollution from our wastewater cannot be proven and doesn't have to be proven. It's, it's, it's in the, the uh, purview of, of the state DEP to say, because of our proximity, et cetera, there is a problem. It must be corrected. Their, their conversation with Greasy and their report back to the commission uh, Wednesday was that other than, and, and I'm not, I think it's, it's wonderful, other than the shore area, not even all the shore area, but the shore area and Long Hill, those are 1A, okay, uh, you know, they have off-site. Uh, the rest of the town, uh, they just simply, simply recommended now a monitoring system that the, the Orpus Control Commission has got some sort of a monitoring system. And, and I know the chairman said, I don't know what I've been monitoring, and he's correct. Based on, on what, you know, we're being sued by, you know, by the state, in essence. How do you monitor th that an area is being polluted? At least in all Sebrick, they're taking areas and they say, these areas need to have new septic systems put in. He's not even saying that. He's saying, you have to you know, monitor these areas and see if there's a problem. So uh, somehow I think he's violating the court order that, that you, you folks may, maybe he has to be questioned about that. And what is the basis now for that cease and desist court order that we've got against it? It's, it's a total term, I mean, and I don't know whether that was an accurate representation of what he said or did he actually say that. Because that's, to me, that puts a stop on it. All the pride was made, at least in, in the recent five years, uh, that the Water Control Commission has been working in. They're going in a certain direction, and you know, they're testing property, they have potentially three properties. And the problem isn't that they don't have enough properties. From what I've seen is the problem is that uh, the, the distance of travel is, that's being used by the state is the same as if it was a septic system versus a, a super well-treated wastewater. Mm -hmm. and, and that doesn't make any sense at all to me. Mm -hmm. so, okay. I think it's important that the town might want to attend that. I'll be there. Can, can I comment on that? I'll be wait for Okay. Anybody else? Anything? Yeah. I, I'm waiting to hear the answer. Did the Board of Selectmen ever vote to authorize the first selectman to set I'll answer list? that. There's no answers given in this section of the meeting. I'll talk about it in selection time. Okay. Right. Great. Thank you, man. All right. Moving on. Uh, we have resignations and appointments. There's a, a request. Uh, oh, sorry, please. I move that we approve the minutes from 1 to 7, 2000. They jumped in. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No abstention. No motion carried. Oh. <laughs> All right. You were me, Dolly. Dolly always snapped in there with a minute. All right. Um, resignation appointments. I have a, a letter of request from Ned Failer, uh, Farrell to be appointed to the uh, Connecticut River Valley Agricultural Council. Um, you see his letter here. Uh, Second, I'll second that motion. 
John Hart. Oh, John Hart. Yeah, so, yeah. All right. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? None abstentions. None motion carried. Fire Department Rescue Truck. Yeah. And two things. It's a twofold uh, agenda. A twofold agenda. Uh, I'd like to bring forward the Board of Selectmen and say uh, thank you. Um, we have received the 2014 SDI Heavy Rescue. Um, it is in service. Um, there are a couple of when it came in, we made a punch list. It's been out for service. There's three minor things that are still on the books. Hopefully next week, those are going to be addressed, taken care of, and we'll be on our way. Um, so I'd first like to uh, ask the Board of Selectmen to recommend making final payment, because we have uh, for acceptance of the apparatus. And uh, as I said, we have already put it in service. We have about 12 guys. <coughs> trained to drive it goes have been the last three Mondays and so on going through and getting them all squared away on it. Okay. We'll start with that. Can we make a motion to accept the truck and authorize final payment? I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All right. Discussion on this? What is final payment? Four hundred something thousand dollars. Uh, three something I don't I was looking for the final invoice it's three hundred and something. Serious. Yeah. Bill yeah. should have the exact number because it was a 50 50. Yeah, Bob's got it. Yeah, right. Bob's got it. How minor are those three? Um, it's light switches for the doors. Um, there's a, we're having an issue, not so much with the generator pump cracked when we were training. That's got to be, it's at the shop, it's got to be put in next week. Um, and they have to, uh, tune the Cummings motor and the Allison transmission because when you engage it, it was speeding up too much. It's all computerized, John, so they've recalculated it, talked to the manufacturer, so when they put the new pump on it, they have to do that work for us, yeah. um, That would be Five Star out of East Hartford, the Freightliner dealer. They're the representatives for SDI. <coughs> Do you consider that minor? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to hold anything back until that's done? Well, because once we pay them, yeah, no, sure. they won't get paid till. I mean, it's going to go to you guys. That that truck's going to be back in service. I mean, it's in service now. It's just that you wouldn't do this as a as a customer of an auto dealership. You wouldn't pay for something that's not there. I mean, to to the specifications that you purchased the item. It was to our. I know, but it's the not way now. we specified it. But it's not now. Well, they like I'm saying they're. Going to put the new pump in it. It'll be set next week. Well, I'm just authorized. I'm saying the that payment gets made after the yeah, after those three things are yeah. addressed. You guys are totally set. Right? Yes, I mean the switches. It's little switches up in the top. They didn't get a check customer. Yeah, the indicator light. It's like minor things. I mean, you buy a new car and two weeks later, I have a brand new RV and the awning blew off. Yeah, these are known. So yes, that we've come up. And they have a list, they, they're notified, it's in writing. And like I said, they're addressing themselves. What is the, what is the warranty on it? I'll amend the motion. The, the warranties are some things are a year, some things are two years, the paint is 10 years, some things are the body in itself for 30 years. It all depends upon what you're talking about. We have a two year on the drivetrain, two year on the drivetrain. The pump has a, the pump, that little shaft in the engine all has probably five years. I believe it's a five year on the motor train. Um, one general question. I'm really hoping this truck appears in the 350 parade. This it is, is scheduled and good. all the repairs and everyone has been notified that this truck has to be back in town by Friday if it goes out next week. So it can be in the parade. Oh, back in town for service? What? Yes. This Friday. Okay. This, this coming Friday. Okay. If it goes out next Monday, it has to be back in town by Friday. So so it can be in the parade. Very They've nice. all been, Very nice. I have nice. drivers, it'll all be cleaned up for everybody to see. So you ready to amend the motion? I'll make, yes, I'll amend the motion that we approve the final payment upon uh, the repairs being made uh, to, 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 the to those three issues, to the satisfaction of the fire chief. Okay. Second on that? Second. Right. Second. Discussion further? Right. How, in general, how are you satisfied with this effort? Yes, it has already uh, performed the motor vehicle electrification first night out. But I mean, the expectation. Oh yes. Of what you guys more than 
They went to uh, Essex for the, uh, they, they had an open house for rescue trucks in the area and everybody in the surrounding towns loved it, all the equipment that's on it. it it's going to serve the town of Clinton very, very well. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No abstention, motion carries. Part two. Part two is, is I would not. I would not <laughs> ask the Board of Selectmen selectmen what they with the old 996. It is now out of service. It is sitting out back. Um, I know, I believe, Carol, you met with the gentleman for the appraisal. Or I thought Brian said the appraisal gentleman came down when you were asking about it. The appraiser, yeah, I would be very interested in seeing that get sold. Right. The appraiser came in and said the truck out the door is worth about the maximum forty thousand dollars as is. That's forty thousand um, dollars can use. But nobody is that same gentleman called me the other day asking me what the board of selectmen's interest was in it. And I asked him did he have anybody interested in the truck for that forty thousand? He said no. So I would Is that an appraiser or a dealer? That's, that's an appraiser. appraiser. But he also solicits yep. out. I mean, this I had is a term. It's functioning right up till this minute, correct? Yes. Yeah. It's, in, it's in working order. It's been served. We can, we can, we can make this. I mean, there's been a request to donate the truck from the department out in South Dakota. Uh, there's always people looking to get trucks donated, or we can simply advertise it and put a minimum bid and see, if, yeah. see how it goes. I would that. Put a minimum bid. Yeah, I would like to see an attempt made to sell it and recoup some uh, of the $800,000 before we donate it. I mean, if that's well, I would say that would be the first thing yeah. to advertise and put a minimum of $25,000 bid on it and see if anybody comes forward. And then if it doesn't, uh, then we can you know, entertain an idea of donating it or selling it cheaper to another department that may be in need. <coughs> Any other thing? There is still some equipment on it, depending on who, if another department were to bid on it for 25000 then as we've discussed over there, maybe you leave some of the equipment on it. If it's for some dealer, truck dealer, then you take that equipment off. You know, you, you bid it as the truck without equipment, and then leave it up to you guys as the Board of Selectmen if you want to leave some of the older, the hose reels on it with the hydraulic hose, we can use it, but why give it to them? Would be my, I would say it's just who truck. Did you, who did you purchase it for? Yeah, have you talked to them? They, we have talked to SVI, I've talked to the Marion. Nobody wants None of those guys want it. This would be someone who, um, Eddie White has suggested uh, from Mouth has had some interest in it. Department from South Dakota. Only because it's that type of thing. Um, Eric's towing is also for salvage trucks. You know, because it has some lighting on it, the boxes, they could put all their airbags in it. They could spend a little bit of money, thing, but they want a cheap job. They don't want to spend forty, fifty thousand, 50000 and then have to sink another twenty five, thirty thousand 30000 into the generator to transfer cases and everything else that the truck needs. They're just looking for something cheap. They'll fix it and then use it. But those two guys have come to me and asked me what was going to happen to it, along with the department from South Dakota. I mean, if you're going to, depending on what the bids come in, my recommendation is if South Dakota bids 20 grand, they get it first over, you know, Miles or somebody else, because at least they're going to use it for a rescue truck. It's going to serve a better purpose for what it was designed for and serve another community. All right. So if you want to make a, maybe we make a motion that we advertise it and set a minimum amount. Yes, that be. I'll make that motion. What would the amount be? Twenty-five thousand. Is that your recommendation? Um, no, without, I said, I said twenty-five thousand. Without 25, the equipment. Without the equipment. Without twenty-five thousand. Without the equipment. Twenty-five thousand. Without the equipment.
obviously the minutes um, you guys were there, but it appears to me that we've set Shore Road and Long Hill as um, designation need, needs to go off site. And I'm not quite clear, I, I would like to speak with Dennis about what he um, is anticipating the monitoring program to be for some other areas in town, especially the downtown. And the reason for that is um, I, I think it's an opportunity after being at the planning meeting uh, Monday night, if he plans on doing some sort of monitoring program, which I don't believe is just going to be monitoring well stuff. I think that would be more of keeping an eye on his eye to talk to him about it further, about what he actually needs um, for that. Some of the other areas, they're thinking that there might be some um, more highly engineered systems that might come into place or deep systems that might be useful. Um, but that just kind of, I'll let Carol talk a little bit more because she was at the meeting, but the planning meeting on uh, Monday night, uh, Carol, you were there too, we, we left, but you mm -hmm. saw the, the mm -hmm. exchange. But essentially, one of the biggest things that came out of that, first of all, it was actually, I thought, a very good meeting. Um, there were folks there from everywhere, I thought. I mean, every, it's really yeah. well represented. Yeah. Um, and a lot of ideas out there. And I think they're good ideas. I think implementing them is where they're at right now. And one of the ways to do that, obviously, is to a consultant. Um, in, not in lieu of a town planner, but um, because we don't have one. Um, to help us get through, I think, more efficiently looking for grants, helping us um, through experience with other towns to get where we need to be. One of the things I brought up, and it kind of generated a little bit of, I don't know what the word is, girl. Discussion. Discussion. <laughs> Heat discussion. Heat discussion. Is the fact that uh, water pollution control at this point, which I knew prior, the, the Route 1 area is really not in the purview necessarily of. Um, what the current tasks are for push control to take care of in a way that will allow for future development beyond a reasonable amount. So um, some of the things that the planning committee are talking about, uh, mixed use uh, zoning and transit, what they're calling it transit, transit oriented transit zones, a lot of those things are going to obviously increase uh, the population in those areas and that's not what the Water Pollution Control Commission at this point under the consent order is being tasked with. So I think if Dennis is thinking that that Route 1 area may not have to go off site, it might be a really good opportunity for for uh, water pollution and planning to start really talking about looking at doing some studies for future use on Route 1. But anyway, that, that, that I think now would be a good time since those two things are happening at once that we can really start discussions with Deep and planning water pollution control together um, to think about the future use of of it, um, especially in the West End. So. Sure. Anyway, all in all, I thought it was a really good meeting. Uh, getting back to the WPCC meeting the other night, um, frankly, I found the report that Christy and uh, Mary Jane gave was very encouraging. Um, this town needs wastewater resolution. We need uh, to deal with the problems that we have, but the idea of laying miles and miles of lines is just, just totally um, intimidating, and I think it would break the back of this town because the reimbursement rate just isn't as um, as yeah no for what it would cost to to lay the the miles of line for the areas that were initially um, targeted for off-site resolution would be backbreaking. Um, because the Water Pollution has done due diligence over the last five years and investigated every five-acre parcel and greater parcel property in town, uh, the DEEP is being very considerate of the efforts the town has made to um, to find a property to use, and and the fact of the matter is, there just isn't that property. I mean, there are there are little pieces of property. But there isn't one big property that will meet the needs. So deep is being um, is opening their their thought pattern to the ideas of on-site resolution, particularly to the 
um, areas west of the river here, where they had originally thought they would want pipes. Um, when, when they were talking about monitoring, my impression was, monitoring the, the situations, my impression was that they were talking about the type of monitoring that Sabre did for five years, where they sent a, an inspector along for every pump out that was done in Old Sabre. Um, anytime a, clean, a septic cleaner had an appointment in the town, they had a call. Uh, old Sabre Board of Pollution and they would send someone out to, to write up a report on what they saw and they did that for five years so that they had a baseline of where the problems were. That was my impression is what he meant for what they were discussing as far as monitoring. I, I, it didn't have anything to do with wells. Um, and to monitor the data that gets processed into the Carmody database, you know, to really look at it and see if covers are reporting situations, problems, run back, uh, breakouts, all that stuff. Um, so it's a more um, more hands-on type of approach to see where the problems actually lay because Mary Beth's, Mary Jane's um, um, data has come back that there are not nearly as many problems as, as was thought. The problems are not as general. There might be a specific area of five houses that have a problem as opposed to a neighborhood that has a problem. So I think that, that this is part of the funneling down process that they have determined where the major areas are but they're funneling it down to particular areas with the hope that it can be an on-site remediation. You know, you might have five houses on a cul-de-sac where the cul-de-sac itself is used as the leaching system. You put it underneath and, and now we're not talking about Short Road, we're not talking about Salt Point Road, we're not talking about um, those areas that are determined to have severe and ongoing problems. Those will be dealt with in the um, initial, I mean the original uh, plan where you would go off-site and, and deal with the long term. But, um, but I think they're looking for more specific on-site remediations to keep it within um, within reasonable uh, repair patterns. Yeah. I mean, you, you wouldn't be putting in your, your 1975 septic yeah. system, but... Uh, and also, there's a, you know, this is something that, um, you know, hopefully I can work on with, with the planning committee. There's there's a lot of systems that can, can be put in for different types of... Absolutely. Yeah, you know, if you want to do a multi-use building, there's, there's so examples in Madison. They don't have well, and you know, but I will say, Doing this for how long was that? <laughs> Eight years. Yeah. <laughs> doing this, um, DP as we've gone along, and and done this all this due diligence and looking for these these properties and whatnot. They have time you know year after year started to work with us to really um, detail the areas that need to go off site. And Mary Jane's work just really put the nail in the nail in mm -hmm. for us. And, mm -hmm. and she they are so very good. She negotiated with them, and I think that we're at a point now where. Now I I am starting to feel like this problem is now almost um, I think manageable. Yeah. From a, yeah. Like, I think the last couple of months have been just extremely encouraging. So and I, I think I'm that happy. meeting <laughs> August 29th will open a lot of eyes. The one thing that I have not heard in these meetings is this discussion of downtown as having wastewater issues. Everybody would like to see downtown be dealt with in a different fashion, but there are no occurring wastewater wow. problems and in the center James, of town um, today. And the and the state does not look at future right. use and, and that's what I'm saying about we, that's why the discussion was important the other night at planning. I think and I spoke with John from the consulting company. Um, maybe now's the time or where, where maybe there's an RQ that goes out from your planning committee that says maybe joined with water pollution. How can we study for future use similar to what we did with CDM? And set up, um, you know, look at that in particular as as an area of concern for future development. And he just did that. John just did that with. Um, I think he said he did it without the Essex. I'm not sure it was either Essex or can't remember. But I think it was there Essex. would be clean water fund money available, not through the current task, but potentially a future task with that 55% reimbursement to study 
the things that I think the problem is it's kind of a chicken or the egg thing. I think planning, what I heard was they're waiting for us to solve the problem before they go forward with some of the, but the tasks, but, but we can't do a, that. There's a major misunderstanding right. on the part of the planning committee that right. they keep coming back to saying, oh, downtown wastewater. Right. There well, is there is no not an existing think, problem right. with downtown I think, I, wastewater. I think we finally got yeah, that. Prevents the well, they were, they were talking right. about it. Not no. necessarily. No. No, no well, it does not. There are systems that can be put in. Right. So there are solutions, and when I hear that there. discussion yeah. at the uh, at the planning committee, I just I I yeah, want to. I think I think finally got that. I finally get that through. I think I had a discussion with Alan and, and someone else. Well, that's when it got into the shopping stuff. Yeah, they're rolled out. Anyway, out. But, but the there's an opportunity now to look for it. Planning oh, zoning oh, seems oh. to think that there is. Right. Wastewater is what stopped standing in the way of downtown development, and it is not. But they don't understand that we're not, that's not a task. What about it? What about it? Well, that was the excuse I always heard. I would put For a restaurant. You can't put a restaurant in there. Because but you could. But that's, you could. You could. You could. Well, what, you uh, just uh, it was more access, and I talked to Kirk about it one day. It was more about the access in the park, and then it was about the septic. Bill, you can yeah. do anything with this. You can do a lot of things. Oh. So you know where, my, where the health building. club is? Now, that's multiple use. There's eight apartments. And you want to talk about water. That's right. So I'm just saying, you don't. I don't have a sewer. It works fine. I mean, Madison, I, we have thousands of people going Madison, through this. And you had awful soil over there. Right, yeah. Carolina. It can't be, can be done. done. You might mention the membrane bioreactor. Yeah. Small oh, right, right, right. Plant that Darby Hill presented. Yeah, Darby Hill gave a nice PowerPoint presentation about this. Um, septic, uh, there's uh, membrane bioreactor, MBR, <laughs> membrane bioreactor, but anyway, it's a plant in Alabama that deals with 15, has the potential to deal with 15 million gallons of effluent a day, and it is on how many acres was it? 43 acres. Well, that was a huge plant built. Through. Yeah, for 15 million gallons a day. It's built in a residential area. There is no odor. There, there is no sound. Um, I mean, there are technologies that are readily available. Well, that's that's essentially the same system that Waters Edge uses, and that they use up at the um, crossings. Uh, up at the crossings. Yeah, these are. I mean, if they're if we needed. A solution for the center of town where all the septics were. The problem is not the, the problem is not the treatment facility though. And CDM has has reached out well, yeah, to look well, at well, all the yeah. like, <laughs> Where do you in the parking lot? The no, no, it's not that bad. Yeah, it's where where do you discharge the effluent? That's what we just said. That's the problem. Well, and that was the feature of this MVR plant was that the water was drinkable when it left the plant. They put it into a river that has a specific type of uh, fish that can only grow in a specific type of uh, so it's perfect water. So we can discharge to an acid? No, no, you no, could discharge to here. You could discharge to here. Clinton Springs. To this one. Clinton Springs. Clinton Springs. Carol, this charge is the biggest <laughs> issue for me. We've built around the big one. But the, the water that All right. comes from... All right. Can, can I just ask, Lynn, I've got the needs map here, and it shows... It's got the downtown and Route yeah, 1. That, you know, what does that mean? That, that's the irrelevant. Okay, so we've been working on that for years. That's, okay. and that's the, point, that could almost be deemed irrelevant. That's the draft oh, facilities that. plan that was created in about 2000 by CBN. So this that's is no longer considered a new area? What's happening now is, is through work with Mary Jane and with Deep, we're trying to really determine of those needs areas which ones really need to be off-site and which ones can those be on-site. Those are very broad so that, strokes on that map. So is there a new map? You, it's those one those are very broad strokes. And, and property, property, property. Property. So is there is there a new map? Not yet. Okay. Because she didn't see it. Question. That map was you, you, you folks spent millions of dollars on engineering studies, okay, and that map was developed based on development in areas that are critical. You know, like I say, rivers and wetlands and uh, and and whatnot, uh, and and the sound and. As I say, the philosophy wasn't that the, that your septic system is surfacing. Mine doesn't surface. That you have to have a sewer. Mine doesn't surface. So the philosophy was that 
not that you that you had a failure. You have in, you have Russian assignment that are pumping on a weekly basis. Pumping on a weekly basis. That's not a problem? No, I'm it's not a problem. That is the resolution. It's not a problem. It's a business. Problem. Problem. Letting it's go not a problem. It's a business. Every single week. That That's is the resolution. No, it's a failure. It's not. Absolutely. No. That's no, it is not. That is not. A failure is when there is second floor surface of the ground. When there's a breakup, that is a failure. That is the definition of accepting failure. It is not a failure. It is a dealing with a situation. And and that is what I would like to see planning and zoning uh, open their eyes to, that there are other methods of dealing with the situation. And if you grant approval and say it should be pumped out once a week, then that's the way it is. And you're not going to hurt the groundwater, and you're not going to hurt the, the soil. Yeah. You're just going to deal with the situation. All right, all right. Well, I, I just would like people to Carol, open. Carol, you can't argue for pumping. That's the business plan. <laughs> In this to promote my business, then you have we have never met. <laughs> <laughs> She's ready to retire. <laughs> All right. My job is looking out for people and keeping them as happy and as <coughs> um, comfortable and in an affordable home as they can be. Okay, okay we need moving on. All right, motion to adjourn. Nine o'clock. Second I. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion no motion here. Oh, right. Jumping a gun.